Hallo, wie geht's? Hallo, Ciao. danke, danke. Ciao, wie geht's? Hey, hey. Ja, Hi. ja. Wie es halt so ist im Lockdown. Naja, wie immer. Sollen wir auf Englisch sprechen? Yeah, yes, okay. okay. Yeah, let's speak English. It's easier for everybody. Hi. So, well, you know, if Stadt, Stadt is full despite the lockdown. Mm-hmm. Well. So we're, we're supposedly closed, but we're always at our desk. And um, wait, I'll show you the show from outside already because that's the funny okay. part. Yeah. So, wait. So, as you know, we called it a peep show because you had this funny conversation with my mother, right? Where you said, exactly. oh, how is it going to happen? How are you going to do the show during the lockdown? And uh, so apparently uh, mom and you were saying, oh, well, I guess people will just look at it from the window like a peep show. Absolutely. It's the only thing what is allowed in these days, right? Yeah, yeah. And, well, and you have big windows. Uh, and it's actually windows. inviting to peep. Yes. And the people have been putting their nose against the window, actually. <laughs> and uh, looking at the show from, from the outside. And then, of course, every now and then we let them in. Peep or sneak. It could have been also called sneak show. Sneak show, yeah. Well, <laughs> we, we love to be sneaky, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, and I think she's just fantastic also as a, as a kind of, you know, lady in the window. Yeah, but, you know, she should not stand alone. I mean, here she stands alone. That's okay. But mostly she has, she has the a guy partner. or the guy. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're a couple. They're together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we separated them for now. We put them yes. in the more masculine room. Her boyfriend is here. With. Because one could go... And could, uh, People only no. see the lady. I'm here. I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, good. Yeah, so her boyfriend is here, actually, with the other guys. Yeah, that's a typical businessman, as we can see. Yeah. And that, yeah. And the, and the pickle on the other side. Uh, not the pickle, sorry, the, the, the hoodie the hood. on the other side. The hood. Oh, the hood, yeah. The Wait, hood. we'll ask Iraj to go on. Yeah. Yeah, so I, my poor assistant had to come in Sunday morning to, uh... <laughs> exactly, here you are. Okay, now the piece is finished, right? No, exactly. And I think that's a typical winter hood, what we use in Austria, and a Wollhaube, Wollmütze, it's very important. Yes. And it also is now not only important during winter time in, in Austria and Europe, uh, also I have realized quite often during the entire year. So many people use it now at the moment. So it became kind of a, a fashion tool, what is quite interesting because it comes directly from the mountains. Yes, exactly. So I, grew, I grew up here. with this. Yeah. Yeah, so did I. I mean, I still, in our times, uh, my, our, you know, grannies and aunts, they still used to make them for us, right? I mean, I had some that were handmade. Yeah, my grandmother too. <laughs> <laughs> so I even had little pompons on the side. I can remember. Yeah, Many no. We, ah, okay. No, no. We had just the big. How do you call this pom, 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 pompon? Pompon. Yeah, yeah. How do you call it in German? Um, hmm. Gute Frage. Uh, <laughs> Pudel. Das ist der Pudel. Die Pudelhaube. Das ist der Pudel. Ja, yeah, Pudelhaube. Genau. genau. Okay. Here's like one pompon. Na ja, super. So you see, it's a very inviting show because, of course, we can have a drink. This is, yes, this is a bar. It's a real yeah. bar. Yeah. So, and, and people should actually, I mean, now it's not possible, unfortunately, <laughs> but people should really use it as a bar. They should drink there. They can yeah. lean, lean against the table and, and just enjoy life and enjoy, you know, enjoy the presence. Um, yeah. And okay. being with a good, it, it, you have there, I think, what is it, champagne or, or white wine or whatever? Yeah, champagne. Can, yeah, we can open it, sure. It, it could be also schnapps, what we use in Austria, or other yeah. alcohol beverages um, exactly. in, this, in, this, yeah, in these times. It's also, I think, quite uh, necessary from time to time. Yeah. To do for this. sure. So I, I'm very sorry, but you actually missed having a huge party here in Stadt in February. Because if you ask Maurizio Catalan or Arne Quince or 
Philippe Colbert, they all tell me that, you know, the highlight of coming here was a crazy party I threw for them. So, yeah. <laughs> another year. Oh, well, here we go. So. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, you know, first we're not allowed to travel and then I'm really scared. No, I know, uh, I know. No, no, no. Because no. I belong to no this party. age group, which has to be careful. And actually, I should be vaccinated so far right now, but I'm not. No, I know. Of, there are no, things that are late Europe. in... Mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, yeah, once exactly. you want to over. So cheers so, to you. So uh, just to this piece, I want to uh, talk a little bit. It's uh, a series which is called Drinking Sculptures. Yeah. And people are invited to um, drink, to use drink. alcohol. Uh, you know, alcohol was always a very, very uh, used and would say important tool for artists. Um, except um, uh, on the other side, pop stars or pop musicians, rock musicians were more used of drug, drug users and, sure, alcohol, uh, and artists more used um, alcohol. alcohol. So and I dedicated several pieces to several artists, which we know now they were, uh, well, heavy. Big alcoholics, heavy drinkers. drinkers. But you know, this is, uh, this is something, I mean, it's so politically incorrect to say it today, but this is something what brings us uh, uh, and um, it, uh, our reality is stricter and stricter all the time. And uh, we're not allowed to smoke anymore and to eat meat and all this. So and no. this is an, an important aspect in someone's life to find um uh, yeah to find this as in all in all societies also in the old societies they used uh what is the rausch in english they used um uh, do you know what rausch is in english when you get drunk no oh they, yeah uh, to be uh inebriated or the, to be what tips okay to, no. yeah to change statues to the uh, to the yes um i don't another... know the right word in english and so leave your reality your daily routine and your daily reality to transfer yourself into something else which is when you do it every yes. day very dangerous another and state. deadly but from time to time it was very important and it is still very important so this is this 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 piece is playing with these issues and um, yeah. To get high, yeah, exactly. Someone said here to get high. That's right. Yeah, high is high is not the right word. High is when you it's too much have a, a joint right or word, something. No. But this is getting drunk. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Well, let's say getting drunk. The excess. Let's call it the <laughs> excess. It's so important in a way, yeah, because our our yeah. times became so clean and so correct and so sad in a way also um, and I Absolutely. think it's necessary to point these possibilities um, as an other as another part of our society and of our reality okay so it's 11 a.m. I think it's we have <laughs> I have nothing to drink here I'm sorry yeah, just water <laughs> cheers and and the table is the table is also important. It's a typical table of the mid-century design, mid-century furniture. It's a table of the fifties, and I relate quite often to this because first I was born in the fifties, and second, second it became such a. Um, uh, many of them became treasure designs. Um, for many people, they became icons in a way, and uh, so I try to use. I, I, I'm 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 keen to work with icons from different levels, like um, not only design icons, architectural icons, philosophical icons, fashion icons. So and this is the reason why I use these furniture. They in a way fit to my to my world, reflecting art. And there is a big pickle, as you can see, and the pickle is penetrating yes, the table. Yeah, it's a penetrating egg-shaped table. So tell us about the pickles because you always use pickles and sausages in your art. And so, I mean, you know, I, uh, I can say something about pickles and sausages. Of, of course, they they remind us and should remind us to this very, let's say, ridiculous part of 
manhood. Um, no, it's not ridiculous. You know, uh, well, it's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's quite often, it quite often turns into something like ridiculous because in the, in the, in the past, in the history of mankind, men were mostly ruling and all these wars and all these uh, testosterone driven craziness is related to these kind of yeah, things. Yeah, of course. So, Ego. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, and this man drivenness. So I'm, I'm criticizing this and I make fun about this and I'm cynical with this. Let's say yeah. I make these absurd things which are related to these kind of social issues also. And it's a big social but you issue. Have this is changing now and it's good. You have another sculpture that relates to men and drinking. So uh, this is this one here, of course, which is called Fata. I, I must say, I absolutely adore your Murano pieces. Mm, thank you. But this one also is really, in a way yeah, you but, call it Fata, which means father. Yeah, because first I met mother, the Mutter, on the, on the right yes. side. Yes, it's yeah. Mutter because, you know, it's a warm bottle. When we as kids, we make this experience that our mothers give us love through giving us a warm bottle and heat. It's such a symbol of the warmth of the warm bottle, such a symbol of love and carefulness. And then on the other side, you have this Doppler double liter of wine, but with father. Yeah. And it's exactly what we drank in Austria. My, my grandparents and parents, they were actually drinking these kind of bottles. Nowadays, they're rare, they don't use them anymore. Um, so it's, or some, some people use it. Hermann Nitsch makes a wine and he has still these bottles. I think that's even a Hermann Nitsch bottle. So this double liter, this double liter, it, it, it comes from a time when quality, when quality was not important of the wine. It was just the amount. The so amount. For this reason, uh, the double liter, the double speaks about, you know, also many things like strengths and uh, overestimating strengths and all this. Your and, capacity, yeah. Yes, and I grew up in this society where either, you know, fathers came back from the war and um, mentally and, and um, physically um, uh, destroyed. And many of them became heavy drinkers because mm -hmm. they could stand this horrible experience of being in the war. Uh, the really, Great that's war funny. At that time. Did, did you hear Schwarzenegger, what he said lately, Arnold? He talked no. about that. Yeah, he spoke about exactly that, about growing up um, in post-war Austria, where yeah. all the men uh, would drink a lot and then beat up their kids and their wives. He just yeah. spoke about this publicly for the first yeah. time. Let's not say all the men, but no. some did. Some. And you know, this is so, it's a, a bit paradox. So we have the loving mother giving warm and then the father who is a drinker, of course it's overloaded and it's overdone, but it's a, it's a synonym for a certain uh, society and a certain time of, um, the, of the past of Austria, not only Austria, I mean, whole Europe, the whole world actually. The whole world, yeah, that's true. And then we again have this very playful sausage, which I love. Yeah, it became, it became, I mean, I like these glass things because they are, they have this, of course, translucidity and, yes. and beauty and material and color. But I also love another aspect. When they fall down, they're broken forever. Yeah. So they're in a way very fragile. Extremely. And, and, and this heavy sausage, like a knackwurst in Austria, and then this um, light, lightness and fragi fragility yeah. It's a contradiction, what I like in, in a of way, course. In, in this piece. And here they're, of course, much more playful than yes. these long legs. Yes, I call them avatar. Uh, you know, an avatar is something what transports, um, let's say, a consciousness into another uh, being. And then you can look through this other being into the world. So mm -hmm. I play with this and... Um, I like when they walk with these long legs and they're like fragile again and um, spaceship sausages or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, sausages from out of space or something from the future. I don't know. And then what's, what's funny, my, because I was actually brought up with sausages when I, my, I was the first years I stood with my grandparents and my grandfather would make every day a walk with me and 
and it was nice. And when I behaved well, I always got a benefit and it was mostly a sausage and a pickle. Yeah. It was in the, in the typical Austrian semmel, you know, this white bread, yes. around white bread. So this was a benefit for me and it was a lifestyle also. And I've realized it was not only a mid-European lifestyle, the sausages and pickles. Pickles exist in Japan and in many different uh, parts true. of the world. Like in America, they're just called differently. And, it's, and you know what a pickle is? A pickle is intestines, a part of intestines, uh, if it's a yeah. pickle. And then they stiff meat in it. So it's um, uh, all the meat, what they don't use normally, what they, what they would, wouldn't eat normally, they put it in the pickle. So it becomes this kind of strange transformative thing what I'm, yeah, what, what, what I enjoy. So, so it's your like Madeleine de Proust in a way. Huh? <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. your Madeleine yeah. de Proust. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it reminds you of your childhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I don't know. Childhood, childhood, childhood is, you know, is making us. Um, I mean, this is every, everybody knows and everybody uh, is aware of this. But um, when you reflect these things, what were happening then, when you were a child and how you were brought up, it's true. It different conditions were set, and anyway, so, social conditions in any way, uh, but also habits and and all the other things. So I found this very intriguing to work about also. And that's and the here, newest, latest. And this is, is one. yeah, actually the light, your light is bad because one yeah. don't see the beauty. Um, okay. Yes, here we see it. So, you know, every, every stone is in a way a conglomerate of different material, different charks and other, uh, uh, materials like a sausage by the way so mm -hmm. I found this equivalent interesting the simple form the basic form and then this beautiful material was intriguing me and was um, in a way tickling me to work with this and then I made it glossy which mm -hmm. reflects the light and you can see yourself also a little bit inside right. and yeah yeah it's beautiful and, yeah and then you chose a very rustic pedestal to... Yes, um, I, I thought it needs... Um, contrast. A contra a, yes, a, a, a contrast and a contra uh, um, uh, material. And I mean, marble has always been used, uh, you know, in Renaissance and things like that. So maybe this is a fun way. Yeah. Yes, uh, historical. it's actually my first. It's actually my first marble sculptures I did. I did. I did some some years ago some pieces, and now I did it again, because of the pure beauty of the material. It's it's yeah. uh, bronze is something, but bronze is always uh, you, you can you can hide bronze under a layer of uh, patina or with paint or whatever. But this is what it is. It's this gorgeous stone, and yeah, the inside shows exactly what the outside shows exactly what's inside so the surface reflects very much the inside and this is actually a basic sculptural issue in my work very very common because i was from the beginning dealing with questions of skin like layers of clothes are also a second skin and the house is a third skin so this understanding of the world as a as an um, so we have a good cultural question. Cultural issues, this I found interesting. Sorry? So we have a good question here. It says, would you say humor plays an essential part in your art practice? Yeah, I would say the absurd plays an essential yeah, part in my art practice. And sometimes the absurd moves to humor and sometimes it moves to, it can move to bitterness or it can move to a critical, uh, to a critical agenda. But the absurd is very, very, very important for me. And the paradox also. So yeah. those. And this produces also humor, humor for some people, not for everybody. I well, remember once I have... Some people have I, no humor at all. <laughs> now, so, so, when I made Narrow House, you know... Yeah, this, so this, we go to your fat houses. I'm going to move there. It's, it's my small... When, when I made Narrow House, my small parents' house, uh, which was not funny at all, but I like to squeeze the house and to speak about a certain society, even my, my past of, of my childhood when I grew up. And it was 
it was not at all funny, but some people were laughing and found it funny and others found it scary and others found it um, um, uh, claustrophobic. So different perspectives on one piece. And this yeah. I like. Anyway. But this is and extremely this is, funny, the, I think. This is um, Le Corbusier House Villa Le Lac in That's right. Vevey on the, on the lake. Not Virginia. far from here, yes. And yes. Now, okay. I, I, I was there last year or two years ago, invited to make a show. It's a beautiful little house what Le Corbusier built for his parents. And his parents lived in a nice big house, but he found they have to live in another house. And he, he built them this villa on mm -hmm. the lake. It's a small house. It's just five meters wide. And I don't remember how long, 60 meters long or so. Mm -hmm. And But the funny part is it's it's still there as it was when yes. it was built, I think, 19, in the 1920s. Yeah, now you can visit it. People should visit yes. it. Right. Yes, it, it's great. It's really, yeah. it's really fantastic to see. But also because he didn't care about anything what is now so important, um, ecological uh, um, uh, uh, um, things and so on. So, he, for example, when there is no, there is no a, a good heating system in the house, and yeah. when he lived in Paris, and his brother and his mother lived in the house after the father died. And when all this he read in the newspaper that bad weather would come, he would write a telegram, send a telegram to his brother and tell him, please go to the lake, take big stones out of the lake, put them on the oven, make them hot, <laughs> and spread it out in the house that it gets warm, that it gets warmer in the house, because there was just no isolation in these days. So to see this house, it's so interesting because it's a piece of art, but not practical at all and not related to our modern commodity. Yes, yes, no. and, but still it's so beauty. So uh, for that reason, I played with this house, house also and made it fatter. We made it a bit fatter. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So Gigi Kraft, hi Gigi. Gigi is asking, you, you remember Gigi Kraft from Borolac. She's asking, did you ever think of creating a self sculpture but distorted? Me, my, me and my, me, myself, a self-portrait? Yes. Yes. Well, I did. I made photographs yes. with myself a lot. Yeah. I did, yes, yes, yes. And even I filled myself up with layers of clothes many years ago, and it's called Me, Me, Fat. That's and right. And uh, uh, what's so interesting, because when you, you know, the, the, the fat thing is for me a basic sculptural issue, because when I make uh, something in clay, a sculpture, I add volume or I take volume away. Yes. When we gain or lose weight, we also add volume or we gain, take volume away. No. But that's, that can be called a sculptural work. So yes. gaining and losing weight is a sculptural issue. And that's so interesting for me. And that's, that's Sigmund Freud, yeah. godfather of Vienna, uh, Viennese culture, 19th, 20th century. That's his birth house. Um, Sigmund Freud's birth house. He, he was born in, in, in Bohemia, uh, former Bohemia. Uh, no, uh, yes, former Bohemia, now Czech. And uh, I also wanted to make it fair. I have a buddy from Hydra who says hello from Hydra. Ah, hello, hello, hello to Hydra. I miss Hydra so much, my yeah, God. I, I hope I can go. I hope I can go back soon. Yeah. <laughs> At the moment, it doesn't look so good because of all these vaccine missing and so on. Yeah. But what I wanted to say to the Fed story is, when you change volume, you change content. Yeah. When you see myself on the photograph, slim as I am, and then bigger, obese, it changed totally content because all of a sudden people reflect different things and uh, mostly so, uh, uh, politically incorrect things. So it's very much related to uh, content and, and um, self-reflection and uh, things yes. like that. Also. So I'm an ever-evolving artwork. And <laughs> all the women were always trying to control our way <laughs> up and down and up and down and up and down. <laughs> yeah, so wait, let's go back to the first room when up no yeah. and then you have something else here well we have another beautiful beanie which will come back later yes or or now if you like yeah, but again, all the beanies there have to be people have to use it from time to time yeah, I, because then it becomes to life. 
So exactly. it's a perfor- it's called I call it performative piece yeah. because you you know a, a, a beanie yeah, exactly a beanie protects and and uh, you can hide in it and uh, and you can peep out into the world. Actually, it relates to the peep show also, and that's real that's real wool, yeah, you know, yeah. s- stitched, and 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 when you go close, you see it. So it's real knitwear. A real like a pullover, I like the beanies are made with these nice stripes, um, and in a way, it in the past it would have been a girl's beanie, but now it's also a boy's beanie because I actually I have a I have a pink beanie. I like it. And it's very comfy under here actually. I'll show you the inside of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's very cozy. Look, it's <laughs> well, like you're in the in the yeah. Room. Well, inside it's just. Polyester. It's a polyester yeah. hut inside, and that's my signature. Yeah, exactly. Okay, crawl out of from under it. Oops. I mean, usually everybody would want to come in and take photos. So, how do you do this now with the opening? I mean, uh, with the show, nobody is coming, or what? What do you do? Well, listen. A few things that well, we're supposed to be closed. Uh, and but you're not. That's the Swiss way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're supposed to be closed. Let's put it that way. We are closed. So we're just working at our desk. And, you know, if people want to pick up something, they can come in to, they call it call and collect here. So oh, you yeah, call, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, call and collect. So, okay. There you are. But no, actually, um, I, um, I did a little uh, chalet. I told you about it, a little barn. I was lucky enough to get a little barn right across my house really like a very rustic old barn. And we totally redid it in, in uh, th- three weeks time. And we built it. Nice. Art- yeah, it's nice. We built an art library there. It's small, it's like 90 square meters. And uh, it's all wood and wooden beams and everything. Okay, and, nice, nice. Yeah, it's, it's nice. And so we've put things there. And uh, people love coming there because they find it very cozy. They feel very okay. Uh, you know, they remove the mask and they just have a tea or a blue wine or whatever. They can they remove the mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just me and two other people, you know, okay. yeah. in my home, basically. You know what we have? I have now this machine which cleans the air and kills the, the viruses. Yeah. You, you should put this in the room because, um, you know, it would help. Yeah. Taking off the mask. Yeah, sure. No, you're right. But uh, anyway, it's, uh, you know, now everybody's naturally sits apart. It's not like people don't sit together anymore or anything like that. So, yeah. so, so sad, so sad. Yeah, it's sad. I, I hope it doesn't change our behavior for in the long run. I don't know. I know. I'm so longing to meet people and to hug them and to drink to, with them or go to I, concerts and go to, it's, yeah, we're, we're all desperate doing this. It's yeah, just, we're cut off, cut out of everything. So uh, I called it caravan because I just put things from all over the place there. So there's a stone sculpture we didn't see here because it sits under a um, very beautiful tree hut painting by Kawamata uh, over there. And um, I think I sent you a photo. Anyway, it's a very cozy place and people love to come and they come maybe two at a time or three at a time. And we chat and it feels like home. So f- people feel much more comfortable going there. Uh, and oh, actually, uh, on the 17th, we're going to open a show with a very young Peruvian artist, painter, who lives in Berlin. And I've decided just to hang the pictures there and do a real show there because, you know, Yeah, 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 I see. You have? Yeah, well, good. Mm-hmm. So before oh, we yeah. let go, maybe I'll show you one more. Oh, yes, I love them. You know, actually, my assistant, it's very funny. It's quite embarrassing. This uh, penis sculpture. He, uh, he, I usually sit here, it's, right? It's and, not a penis, it's a gun. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> you see how I am? My mind, you see where my, what a dirty mind I have. Excuse me, it's a and gun. He, he put it in front of my computer. It's a fat gun. And I was always caressing it like this, you know, but mm-hmm. completely unconsciously because I think it's so sweet and soft. And then I yeah. think he uh, moved it to the other side you know, of the it's, it's, it, it's a gun. I, I, I don't know which one it is. Is it Barretta or the clock? I don't know. But it's uh, the man's 
uh, most loved toys in different yeah. ages and in different characters. Exactly. And then we have this. This is an older work, actually, that you redid. Yeah, it's one of those uh, pieces where the, the, the person exists only of the clothes she's wearing. Yes. And the volume, so the person is, is missing, person is not there anymore. So clothes makes is, men. You would say clothes makes kind of men. A, yeah, this is kind of an anorak or so. Um, yeah. Uh, a winter, winter thing. Yeah. A so, little bit like the Michelin uh, figure. So in your idea, clothes makes men. We say la vie ne fait pas le moine, clothes doesn't make men, but in your idea, clothes makes men. Well, clo clothes doesn't make men, clothes <laughs> makes humans. Female and men, yes, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen. Thank you so much for this great tour. It was great to spend. Thank the you. With you. Thank you, huh? Patricia. And I wish you all the best. It's such a pity that I cannot be there. I would have loved to be there and no, enjoy the parties and the skiing and the <laughs> art. And you. Yeah, and all your Austrian friends are here, but they'll come and see the show at some point. Yeah. So. Okay. Yes, great. exactly. Someone said first Freud, then penis. Well, yes, that's that's the essence of life, I guess, you know, this yes, is a very yeah. Austrian, Austrian exhibition. Very, very Austrian, yes. For Swiss, it would be Calvin and others. <laughs> At least we're honest about it, about our obsessions. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank, bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>